Hello, I'm Mike. This is Will. We are the Tabletop Donkeys. Hello. And we're bringing you issue 77 of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest today. And this issue, you get the third sprue for the Primaris Repulsor. So you can actually finish building the entire tank with this issue, but uh, we'll show it off fully in the next issue when we, you get the base. And we'll do a brief overview of the issue as always, but if you want to skip that, there will be a time code in the description. So heading in, first up we have some background info on Space Marine Devastator squads. So these are the main heavy support infantry role in the Space Marine Army. Uh, still made up of regular Space Marines, not Primaris ones. Overview of some of the weapons they use, like las cannons, missile launchers, heavy bolters, uh, the grav gun. Then we have some Turian Devastator squads, who are Centurions, but uh, more long-ranged. Gives you an overview of some of the weapons they have. Say so again, heavy bolters and las cannons and that sort of thing. Now we have the company organisation for each of the 10 companies that make up an entire Space Marine chapter and the kind of command structure and each one's specialisation. And then background on the Necrons, uh, so an ancient alien race of machines awakened from their tombs to uh, fight the living and reclaim their former empires. And they make up various dynasties. And so you've got your different color schemes, the Nihilac dynasty, I believe you can see down here. Some of the moles in the range like we've had with other faction overviews. And finally is the painting guide for the Repulsor. Nothing you're not used to at this point, it's mostly going to be blue. If you're painting it as the Ultramarines with some, uh, and the rest of it's going to be mostly silver. It does say to leave all the grav plates off to make all of these mechanics easier to paint. And uh, you could potentially leave the kind of engine cover off as well to make the engines easier to paint. The usual edge highlighting and sort of thing. And painting the Tech Marine crew member. It's probably the first Marine you've had to paint in red at this point. But that's the finished tank. And I would almost recommend waiting to build most of the tank until you get the next issue, just so uh, you can look at what all the weapon options are and decide what you want to put on it. But with that, we'll get into our mission for this issue. So on to our mission and our bit of fiction here, Crash Landing. There's a bit of hope for the Imperial forces in the deteriorating battle for Corvon II because reinforcements have arrived, including Imperial Guard or Astra Militarum Valkyries, as you can see in this picture here. They have helped the Imperials regain some measure of air superiority over the planet, which has allowed the Space Marines to land some more forces that they were desperately needing. Unfortunately, one particular transport has been shot down, which was carrying a new Repulsor tank. It's been shot down some distance away from Barakius. Captain Asheran has assembled a task force to go and try and retrieve it, or failing that, to destroy it so the Death Guard can't get their hands on it. So on to the mission and recover the Repulsor. And you'll see straight away on the battlefield map that the Repulsor, without the base, is placed in the centre of the map. So it will have cameo appearance from it in this game. And then there are two deployment zones at the short edges, uh, only six inches on. So there's a little running in this one. But the, it clarifies that the Repulsor tank uh, cannot move or fire any of its weapons. It is essentially just a terrain piece on the objective. Both players have to create a battleforged army as usual. Maximum power rating for this game will be 50. Uh, we and then we roll off and decide that whoever wins decides to, who deploys first. Alternate deploying our units and whoever finished deploying first takes the first turn. Victory points for destroying enemy units. One for the first unit destroyed, so first blood. Uh, one for slay the warlord. And then three points for controlling the objective, which is the tank, at the end of the game. You have to be within three inches of it with as many models as possible. And the game lasts for five battle rounds. So that's it, all pretty straightforward, and we'll show you our army and get straight onto our game. And here is our 50 power of Space Marines. We have a battalion detachment at the front, 3 HQ, the Captain in Gravis armour, the Librarian and the Primaris Chaplain. Three troops choices behind them, the usual two squads of intercessors, and the Sniper Scouts with the Missile Launcher. And then at the back, Elite Choice, that would be the Aggressors, and Heavy Support, the Hell Blasters, and that makes 50 power. The Warlord will be the Captain and he'll have Storm of Fire. I'm also going to give him the Sancti Kalo Relic, so he's 3 plus invulnerable save and a Deny the Witch chance. And the Librarian Psychic Powers will be Might of Heroes and Veil of Time. And here is 50 power of Death Guard. You can see it's all infantry again and it is a battalion detachment. So down the front we've got Lord Gangrus this time and the Emergent Playcaster of the two HQ choices. Troops choices, I've actually got four. On the left we've got three squads of Plague Marines, two of five and one of four. I'll get to the four in a second, but the, the ones at the front are Champion Plasma Gun Power Fist, two Blight Launchers and two Bolt Guns. 
One in the middle is the champion we don't see very often, this is the one with the power fist and bolt gun, and then he's got three bolt gunners and the icon of despair with him. And at the back we have a squad of four. The data sheet we get in the magazine actually allows you to take four plague marines because the minimum size is three, and that's to allow you to use the really old rules where we only had three plague marines in a squad. Four of them still cost seven power, but it's, it is legal in this uh, with the magazine. So we've got the one of the other champion plasma gun and power fist and the plasma gunner and two bolt guns. And then on the right we have 20 pox walkers, two elites, the Noxus Blightbringer and the Tally Man, and then a fast attack choice, a Chaos Spawn. My Warlord will actually be the Tally Man on the right, and he will have for his Warlord trait Arch Contaminator, which is the one that makes plague weapons better for nearby units. The Malignant Plaguecaster Psychic Powers will be Miasma of Pestilence and later Putrefaction. And for a Relic, I'm going to give to Lord Gangrus the Suppurating Plate, which, well, it increases his armor save to 2+, plus, which it already is, but if he makes a saving throw in the fight phase and on 4+, plus, the unit dealing the damage takes a mortal wound, so that might be quite useful if he gets stuck in. Here's our battlefield. In the centre we have the Repulsor, as specified. There it is, you can have a preview of what it will look like eventually, although it's missing its turret gun, obviously, because there's not supposed to be anybody in it. In the centre we have the spaceport board, and we've got a uh, crane over there, and some pipes, and some ruins in a box down here. To the left-hand side of that, the city board, and there's a hematrope reactor, some ruins, a plasma regulator and the other hematrope reactor. And over on the other side, the Canicus mat, with the Alchemite stack, uh, some ruins, and a regulator, more boxes, and so the wall. The magazine wasn't clear about who should pick their deployment zones, so we rolled off to decide that, and Michael picked this end. Uh, I then want to roll off to decide who places a unit first, and I decided Michael should do that. So the Space Marine deployment you can see here, six inches on. The aggressors here, closest to the camera, and then the scouts actually deployed last with their concealed positions on top of the uh, Thermic Plasma Regulator. And they are within two inches of the ammo boxes, physically, within two inches of the top of them. Then behind we have a squad of intercessors, the Hell Blasters, and behind them the three characters, Chaplain, Captain and Librarian. And finally on the far side another unit of intercessors over there. And on the other end of the battlefield we have the Death Guard. Starting closest again we've got the Chaos Spawn, two units of Plague Marines, the one the four-man unit with the plasma gun and the five-man one with all the bolt guns, and the Tally Man behind them. Big unit of 20 Pox Walkers with the Noxus Blightbringer and the Playcaster behind them. And then on the far side the Plague Marines with the Blight Launchers. And the Noxus Blight Bringer is within 7 inches of everybody, so they'll get, their, get extra dice on their advance rolls. And Lord Gangris is in the Teleportarium. And we have 6 command points each, because we have a battalion detachment, and remember the magazine uses the old rules for the battalion detachment, and you're getting 3 command points benefit. Space Marines finish deploying first, which means they get the first turn, so we'll be into Space Marines turn 1. Nobody's going to be in range for shooting, probably for quite a while, so everyone's going to advance except the scouts. So the aggressors, let's go an extra 6. The Intercessors behind the Regulator, an extra five. And the Hell Blasters, three. Uh, chaplain, five. Captain, five. Librarian, one. And finally the other Intercessor Squad, six. Right, so everyone's moved up. And it's just a sort of general advance towards the middle. Uh, aggressors are going to hide behind the Hematrope Reactor for now, even though there's not going to be much shooting. And uh, we're going to use any psychic powers at this point, and nobody's in range for shooting, so we're going to Death Guard turn one. Well, my turn is going to look much the same. Everyone's going to advance, and uh, as you see it on camera, I'll go from left to right, so starting with the Plague Marines furthest away. Everyone gets to benefit from the Noxus Blightbringer, so we're on two dice. So Plague Marines over there get to go four. The big unit of Pox Walkers, only two. Plague Caster, an extra five. The Noxus Blightbringer I'll do last, because potentially he needs to stay where he is. The four, unit, four man unit of Plague Marines go four. The five man unit go an extra two. The spawn, oh, an extra six, and finally the bright bringer, an extra five. Oh, actually, we've got to roll the tally now, so just do that quickly as well. Uh, an extra three. The spawn's managed to get itself behind the box, and plague marines and box walkers and things in various states of advance. Everyone except the spawn is still within range of the bright bringer for next turn. Uh, Lord Gangles will stay up in the teleportarium for now, but in the psychic phase, I will try and use my asthma of pestilence. I'll put it on the unit of plague marines over here with the blight launchers if it goes off. Needing a 6, hitting it with a 7, and the Librarian's obviously not in range to deny. But I haven't got any shooting in range, so very quick turn 1, and we'll be on to Space Marines turn 2. So I'm finishing my movement. Uh, this Intercessor squad has advanced, so we can get uh, around the Hematrope Reactor, and all of this grey area is counted as cover because of the ruins. In the middle, the Intercessor squad have just moved up normally, and all the counters have advanced to get behind them, and the Hell Blasters have set up behind the the hauler, and they're all in cover from it, and the aggressors are going to stay where they are for now and hide behind the hematrope reactor, and obviously the scouts are going to stay where they are as well. In the psychic phase, I'm going to manifest a veil of time on the intercessors in front, uh, 
need a six. Don't get it with a four. That's not the end of the world. So in the shooting phase, the missile launcher from the scouts is going to shoot a frag missile at the pox walkers to try and start thinning them out. They've got d6 shots, three. Hitting on threes, you're rolling ones because of the ammo boxes. That's three hits. Wounding on threes because it's spent four against toughness. Three, one wound. Not disgustingly resilient. Nope, that's a box walker dead. Hey, I'll take this one, it's first away. These three intercessors are in range of the larger Plague Marine squad with the blight launchers. So we might as well shoot them. And the other two are out of range and can't see them anyway. So we've got three shots, hitting on fours, re-rolling ones. Oh, good job we can re-roll ones. That's two hits. Wounding on fives. One wound, and Storm of Fire, so that's AP ones two. Yep, so a uh, five plus armor save. Failed. And disgustingly resilient. Failed. So you took out a Plague Marine as well. And uh, we'll take the bolt gun from the centre. Uh, don't think there's any shooting in range. Any more shooting in no range? No other shooting or everyone else advanced, so... Yep, so we'll be on to Death Guard turn two. We're just going to advance everything again because nothing's in range. Plasma guns won't be in range, so they might as well advance. I'll do the spawn first because it isn't in range of the Noxus Blightbringer, so only one extra d6. And box, four extra inches. So the spawn came round the black box and got to there, and everything else is in range of the Noxus Blightbringer, so I'll just roll all of them at once. Starting with the Blight Launcher squad again, and they get to go an extra six. And the squad the Poxwalkers, an extra five. Blade Caster. An extra six. Four man Blade Marine squad on the far side, extra five. The five man squad with the bolt guns, an extra six. And the tally man, extra four. And finally the Blightbringer, an extra four. So that's the result of my movement. The four man Blade Marine squad with the plasma guns have joined the spawn over here. The five man squad, the box walkers, and the characters all coming through the middle. And the Blight Launcher squad over there have moved up into the ruins, so near the ammo box. I'll spend a command point to put Cloud of Flies on the four-man squad with the plasma guns, because the spawn is going to be closer to anything that might shoot them. And at the end of the movement phase, we brought down Lord Gangrus behind the repulsor itself, where he hopefully can't be seen by anything dangerous. But that's all the movement. On to the psychic phase. And we'll just try and do Miasma of Pestilence again on six. That's an eight, so it does go off. I'll put it on the same Plague Marine squad as last turn. In the shooting phase, the only shooting will be those Plague Marines with the Blight Launchers. They advance, but they ignore the penalty for that because they're Death Guard. And they are just about in range of this front Intercessor squad over here. So we've got four shots hitting on threes, three rolling ones, because they're in the box. That's four hits. Wounding on threes, three rolling ones. That's a one. Three wounds. Three, five armor saves. Made one. D3 damage. One. First one, three. Four. No, first one, two. And second one. Also two, so that's two dead intercessors. Get to move that one and that one. But uh, no more shooting, and no more out of those intercessors necessary. And then... So we'll be on to Space Marines, turn three. So in my movement phase, we're mostly going to hold position. There's been a little bit of shuffling around by the intercessors, and all the people in the middle are just going to step back a few steps. Make it a bit harder for Gangrus to charge us. Now, I'm not going to use any psychic powers for the moment, so it'll be straight on to the shooting phase. So I'm going to deal with the scouts first. They're going to fire their sniper rifles at the five-man Plague Marine squad in the middle, the one with all bolt guns, and a frag missile is going to go into the Pox Augers. So I'll do the frag missile first. D6 shots, six. Hitting on threes, re-rolling ones because of the ammo boxes. D2s, and will re-roll that one. That's four hits. Wounding on threes, three wounds. Three disgustingly resilient saves. Oh, three to one, so that's three more Pox Augers. Take some more off the back. And the four snipers hitting on threes, rolling ones. They all hit. Wounding on fives. Mm. Oh, there's two sixes. That's two wounds and two mortal wounds. So two armor saves for the normal wounds. Made one, failed one. So that's three wounds going through. Disgustingly resilient. Mm. Made one, failed two. So two plague marines dead. The bolt guns from the back. And do the hell blasters next. They're going to overcharge at the remaining three plague marines in that squad. Do them all individually because we might blow up. So Sarge gets a hit. Hell Blaster number one hits. Number two hits. Three hits. Four hits. That's four, five fives in a row there. Wounding on threes. Four wounds. Okay, one at a time. Two damage. That's oh okay. While well, someone survives, uh, second hit. Dead. Dead. And. Dead, just. So that's the Plague Marines wiped out, and a victory point for the Space Marines for destroying them, and another one for First Blood for taking out that squad. So there you go away. 
and two victory points to the Space Marines. This Intercessor squad down here is going to shoot at the Plague Marines in cover. So we have five shots hitting on four, two rolling ones. It's two hits, wounding on fives. Well, that's two wounds, and there's one AP minus two and one AP minus one. So the AP minus one will be negated by cover, so that will be a three plus. Yes, and the other one will be a four plus. Yes. And the other three intercessors will shoot at the same squad. Three shots in, fours, three on ones, two hits, only on fives, nothing. And that's going to be it for my turn. So we'll be on to Death Guard, turn three. Well, I need to keep moving out to the objective. We're going to start with the uh, Poxwalkers are going to advance, and I think all the characters will as well, because they won't be in gun range anyway. Pops walkers, an extra six inches. Plague caster, an extra six inches. Uh, Tallyman, an extra four inches. And the bringer, an extra five. So that's all of them moved up. That's got a lot of bodies near the objective. Lord Gangrus is actually going to stay there for the moment because if I move him out the front, he'll just get shot to bits. Um, so he's really there as a deterrent, I suppose. Then the spawn will advance as well. Uh, it, uh, I only rolled a one. Well, that, that's not enough to get the spawn across to the repulsor, which is what I was hoping to do with it. So it's actually just going to stay here behind the box and hide a bit. And then the plague means have moved up the ammo box and I played cloud of flies on them so they can't be shot. And the other squad of plague means will stay where they are because they're still in range of something to shoot at. So we'll go on to the psychic phase. We will try and use Miasma Pestilence again on the same plague green squad. Oh, getting it with a 12. Uh, so it goes off. I'll take the perils though. Yeah, you can have that. Yeah, so D3 Mortal Wounds to himself. Two, ignoring them on fives. Nope, so he takes two wounds, but they do have Miles for Pestilence. Uh, I also just realised I forgot the Tallyman's special ability, so uh, Michael's very kindly agreed to let me roll for that now. So I need to roll 2d6 for the two command points I've spent, which are both on Cloud of Flies. If I go to 7, I get the command point back. So the first attempt was a 4, so no, and then this turn's attempt was a 7. Yay! Actually got refunded a command point, so I'm back up to 5. And we'll go for a smite, because the uh, playcaster is in range now of the closest intercessors, needing a 5. Getting it with a 7. I'll attempt to deny that. Needing an 8. No, nope, getting a 6. So D3 mortal wounds. 2, so it kills an intercessor. I'll attempt to Break this guy off the back. Uh, we'll start the shooting phase with the squad of plague marines with the plasma guns. They will shoot at the hell blasters. They are in range, but not in rapid fire range. And they will supercharge. So we'll do the champion shot. Um, hitting on 3 rolling ones. That hit. And the other guy. Oh, that's a 1. Re rolling. That says 2 hits. Wounding on 2s. That's two wounds. You are in cover. Five plus armor saves. Made one. I'll spend a command point to reroll the other one just for the sake of it. Well, I made it. Ah, so no damage. And two bolt gun shots as well. Hitting on threes, rerolling ones. Two hits. Wounding on fours. No. Then the other Plague Marine squad over here are still just about in range of these intercessors over here by the intro reactor. We'll start with the Champions Plasma Gun. We'll supercharge again because ammo boxes. So hit three rerolling ones. That's a hit. On two. Yes. Five plus armor save because we're in cover. Yes. Oh. Four shots from blight launchers on threes. Oh. Two ones. Two roll. That's two hits only. Wounding on threes, rolling ones. That's one more wound. Four plus armor save. No. Uh, yeah, I'll spend a command point for that. Down to four command points. And I made it. Yeah. And we do have a bolt gun shot, so we might as well shoot that. Hit. Wounds on the four. That's it for my turn once again, because we're still nowhere near in charge range. So we're on to Space Marines turn four. So my movement, I'll start over here. These intercessors have moved up just behind the pipes. Uh, people in the middle have moved up just a little bit, so it's easier to get in range of the repulsor. And uh, the captain and the librarian have swapped over, so the captain's aura is in range of this intercessor squad. Hellblasters have shuffled around a bit. Then the aggressors advanced around the hemotrope reactor to there. Manifest Veil of Time on the aggressors. Needing a 6, getting it with a 7. I won't try and deny that. Then I'll try and manifest Smite, and it will hit the box waters if it activates. Needing a 5, getting a 7 as well. Marshall will try and stop that, needing an 8. Oh, I did with a 9. Okay. So I'll start with the snipers first. We're going to put everything into the pox walkers. So a frag missile and four sniper rifles. Yeah. Do the frag missile D6 shots. Two, I'll take that. Hitting on the 3s, rolling 1s. One hit. Moving on the 3. No, it doesn't. And the four sniper rifle shots. Hitting on threes, rolling ones, three hits. Wounding on threes, one wound. Can't wound box walkers. Yeah, disgusting, isn't it? No, another dead box walker. Take one away from the far corner. I'll do the chaplain next. He'll shoot his pistol at the box walkers as well. Hitting on threes, it hits. Wounding on threes, it doesn't wound. 
Do the smaller intercessor squad next. They'll shoot at the box walkers as well. Six shots sitting on threes, you're on ones. You're on that one. Five hits. Wounding on threes. What? Two wounds. Look, disgusting, isn't he? Was in it? Uh, two more bad box walkers, is it? I'll stop taking them away from the middle at the back. This intercessor squad's also going to fire at the pox walkers. Eight shots sitting on threes, you're on ones. You're on the ones. Six hits. Wounding on threes. Come on, boys. Three wounds. Disgusting and resilient. Oh, I made one at last, so that's two dead and more dead. Take away more from the back. Now, the Hellblaster squad, they can all just about see the spawn. So, we're going to shoot out at that instead. I will overcharge just to try and get rid of it. Plenty risky. But we've got Sergeant. Gets a hit. Hellblaster number one. Hit. And, oh, there's a one. Rerolling. Into a one, so one guy blows up. There's another hit. So that's four hits and one dead Hellblaster. Wounding on threes. It's toughness five. So that's eight damage. He has no armor save, so and it will die. No disgusting you've done it, so that does a lot of damage. Yeah, the spawn is dead, and that's another victory point for the Space Marines for killing a unit. Take away that Hellblaster at the back. And that'll be it for shooting. Uh, the captain and the librarian are in range with their pistols. So we'll be on to Death Guard, turn four. At the start of my turn, I'm going to spend a command point for the dead walk again on the Poxwalkers, so every infantry model that dies within seven inches of them will turn back as a Poxwalker. I'm down to four command points, but I get to roll this roll for the Taliban's ability. That's an eight, so that does cost me one. So the Poxwalkers have moved round to the north side of the Repulsor. Uh, they're heading for those intercessors over there in the hope that I can get some more Poxwalkers back by killing them. The three minor characters have all moved round that direction as well. None of them advance, so they can all shoot and charge if, if I want them to. Plague Marines that were over here in the ruins have moved out, I'm getting close to the Repulsor for the last turn. On the other side of the tank, uh, Lord Gangrus has moved out, as have these Plague Marines here, to get their plasma guns in rapid fire range. But with that, we'll be onto the psychic phase. We'll start with Smite uh, from the Playcaster, obviously, it'll hit those intercessors. Needing a 5, getting it with a 6, but not a 7 for the North Wound. Yeah, well, we'll try and deny that with the uh, Deadly Matters, try and deny that with the Library. Nope. So I'm going to spend a command point to re-roll a 2 into a 6, so I'm successful. So smite does not happen. And I'm going to go for Blaze of Putrefaction, needing a 5. Getting it with a 7, so that will be a mortal wound to the intercessors if it goes off as well. Yeah, and I'm going to deny that with a captain, so I need an 8. Get ah, it with a 9 as well. No psychic powers for me. Shooting phase, uh, we'll start with these Plague Marines down here with the plasma guns. They will open up on the Hellblasters. In rapid fire range now, so we'll start with the sergeant. Two shots in on threes, we're on ones. That's two hits, and the other uh, one, uh, we've got a hit, but um, a one, re rolling into a four. So four hits, wounding on twos, that's four wounds. Four, five plus arm saves. They're in cover. Didn't make any of them. Spend a command point to try and deny your victory point. Yeah. Nope, the Hellblasters yeah. are destroyed. Well, that is four dead Hellblasters, and a victory point for the Death Guard. We'll do the Plague Marines on the other side now. They will shoot at the other squad of intercessors. Plasma gun supercharged again. Two shots on three, three rolling ones. Have to hit and a one. Oh, two. So one hit. Winning one, two. It did. Uh, they're in cover behind the pipe there. Five plus on a six, I might take a mortal wound. I that made it. There's a five. Two blight launchers on three, three rolling ones. That's four hits. Wounding on three, three rolling everything because they're now in range of the Taliban's warlord traits, but it's a one anyway. No, three wounds. Four plus armor saves, six says I might take a mortal wound. Yeah, I'll take that, so two take damage. Two wounds, uh, the first one does two damage, and the second one damage, so one and a half. So at this stage I'll take this one away, and he's wounded. And gain a pop talker who will come out right at the front of the unit. And block gun as well, on threes, one, one, one hit. Only on four, it did. Two plus, yep, just. I'll do the Playcaster's Bolt Pistol next, because I hope I can take out that one wound intercessor. Hitting on a three. Hit wounds on a four. Nope. And then I'll do the two Plasma Pistols from the Noxus Pipe Ring and the Taliban at the same time. Neither of them will overcharge, they're both hitting on threes, so I'll just do that at the same time. Hitting threes. Ah, well, they both missed. That's it for shooting. In the charge phase, the Poxwalkers will declare a charge on those intercessors. Yep, so we'll overwatch. And I'll just throw a frag grenade and then four bolt rifle shots. So the grenade is. Five shots, you got six scissors rolling ones, because the captain, nothing, and bolt rifles, you rolling the ones, one hit, wounds on a three, it does. Disgusting, is it? Oh, I made one, finally, mm. Take one right off the back. 
And their charge distance will be 7 inches, which will be enough to get them into contact. So that's the result of their charge. Playcaster might as well have a go as well. Let's see what he needs. Possibly an 8. Uh, yeah, that is enough to get him up on tear, up there on top of the pipe, so he gets within an inch. Uh, won't declare any more charges, so on to the fight phase. Uh, I will start fighting with the Poxwalkers. So they'll pile in like that, and the one at the back next to the red die is just within 7 inches of the tally man, so we'll get to re-roll missed hits. That leaves 10 to fight, so I've got 20 attacks, I'll do two batches of 10. First lot, hitting on 4s, because there are more than 10 of them, re-rolling everything. 5 so far, re-rolling, getting another 4 hits. I'll roll these wounds, with 5s. 5 wounds, that's pretty good. And the second batch of hits, again on 4s. 6, and re-rolls, another 9 hits. And again, we need fives. Another two. So that's seven wounds in total. Seven three plus saves. Made all but one. So the wounded man dies yeah, and turns into a fox walker. So he's dead and the fox walkers come back. And it'll be the play castle to fight next. Unfortunately, the battery ran out in the middle of the clip, but uh, he got two hits from his three attacks, but they were both sixes. So I get to roll extra attacks uh, for three hits in total. Wounding on threes. Uh, one wound. I don't get to re-roll it because it isn't actually a blade weapon. Uh, so it's a four plus armor save, which I made. It's tempting to try and punch the playcaster to death, but I'd rather start thinning out the fox walkers. So we've got five attacks, hitting on threes, rolling ones. Four hits, wounding on threes. Three wounds. I'm just guessing there's an hit. Made one fail, fail two, two more fox walkers die. I'll take the ones that are on the far side that are furthest away from the repulse. So that's the end of the fight phase. Uh, the intercessors didn't have to take them out of us because they only lost two models this turn. So we're on to Space Marines, turn five. So in my initial movement, the intercessors have fallen back out of combat, and so he's now the closest target. Everyone in the middle has moved up as far as they can go, and the aggressors are going to advance, and they still have a veil of time on them. So I can re-roll this if I want to. Five, I'll take that. So that will get them to there, and they are within flame range of the Poxwalkers. And range of the objective as well. Yeah. So it's on to the psychic phase. So I'll try and manifest Veil of Time on the Captain first. Needing a 6, not getting it with a 5. I will spend a thing to re-roll that. Getting it with an 8. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to try and deny that. And then I'm going to try and use Smite, and it will hit the Epoch's Hawkers. Needing a 5, getting it with a 5. Deny, deny. Will... Oh, I'll only be a 4. Um, yeah, I'll let you smite them. It's fine. D3 Mortal Wounds. 3. Yeah, disgusting resilience. I won't fail all of them, so 3 Epoch's Hawkers die. Take away that one, and that one, and the one over there, which are furthest from the objective. So now we're on to the shooting phase. I'll do the aggressors. They'll shoot their flamers at the poxwalkers. 66 flamer shots. That's a good roll. 22, 29 hits. We've only got 12 dice, so we're wounded on threes. So that's 10 so far. That's only eight, so that's 18. And then five. That's 23 wounds. Do 12 at a time. Um, well, that's quite a few disgusting resilient, but yeah, but they're actually enough to get rid of them all, even with the, only the first batch. So the Poxwalkers are all destroyed, and that's a victory point for the Space Marines. Two intercessors that fell back, uh, one will throw a crack grenade and the other will fire his bolt rifle at the playcaster just to see if we can get rid of him. So we are just within range of the captain, so we get to reroll ones. So crack grenade hitting on a four, it hits, moving on a three. It does wound. Okay. Standing on the pipe doesn't grant you cover, so this is a 4 plus save. Now oh, 5 is alright. And two bolt rifle shots. Two hits. Only on 5s. Nothing. I'll do the snipers next. We're going to put everything, so four sniper rifles and a crack missile into the plague caster. He is the closest, so yeah. Let's do the sniper rifles first. And the 4s rolling 1s. They all hit. 3s rolling 1s, sorry. 5s. 1 wound. 3 plus armor save. Yes. And the crack missile. I'll spend my last command point to re-roll that, because I need him to die. He hits, wounds on a three, it wounds. Five plus armor save. Nope, uh, dead. No, I'm not going to re-roll that. D6 damage, two. It's enough if I can't make either of these. Double one. And the plate caster goes down. So this intercessor squad, this guy's going to throw a crack grenade at the bellman. The other two are going to fire their bolt rifles at the other plague green squad. Crack grenade. Hits, wounds on a three. No, and bolt rifles. All hit. That's only one wound. AP minus one. So four plus. Nope. Uh, disgusting resilient. Nope. That's a dead plague green. Next, the chaplain will fire his absorber bolt pistol at the same squad of plague runes. That's on three wrong ones. Hits. Wounds on a four. Does not. 
Uh, the librarian's bolt pistol will do go into them as well. Hits. Wounds, AP minus one. Oh yeah, four plus. And yes, that's five. And the captain's pistol as well. Any on twos, you're on ones. All hit. Fives. Nothing. I'll do the captain first because he's the most important. Charge on the bellman, just the bellman. Needing a seven, getting a ten. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I do actually get to overwatch the plasma pistol, won't supercharge it. Fortunately. So the cap- captain's going to get to there, so he's more than three inches away from the tallyman. The intercessors will charge both the tallyman and the bellman. We did it in the wrong order. They char- their charge roll was a seven, didn't catch yeah. on camera, but and we'll try and uh, overwatch just in case from the tallyman. Oh, he hit with his plasma pistol, not supercharged. Wounding on a three. Oh, it did. Six plus? No. No, oh, it actually did a wound. And then the librarian will try and charge as well, the bellman only. The librarian's charge is a four, that's not going to be enough. And then the chaplain might as well have a go. Six isn't going to be enough either. And uh, I will heroically intervene with the tallyman. He's still within three inches of the objective, but just to kind of go in and attack the intercessors. I'll pick the captain. He'll stay where he is. So the captain has five attacks. Going to use his bolt storm gauntlet. Hitting on threes, rerolling ones. It's three hits. Wounding on threes. Three wounds. Six plus armor. Nope, nothing. 3d3 damage. That's six wounds. So he's only got four, so I need to make three of these disgusting resilience. Nope, he's dead. I'm going to spend a command point to try and re-roll one of those failed disgustingly resilience, because if I keep him alive, that's a victory point. Nope, he dies. Lightbringer goes down, and that's another victory point for the Space Marines. Up to six. And then the intercessors get to pile in. So they're going to pile in like that. So they've got seven attacks, hitting on three zero and ones. Roll the one into a hit. Wounding on fives. Two wounds. Disgusting uh, armor saves, rather. Uh, yes, made my armor saves. Well, the tally man will get to hit back. He's got three attacks, hitting on threes. Two hits, three but rolling. re-rolling because of himself. That's three hits. Wounding on fours. Uh, two wounds. He doesn't have a um, special kind of weapon. Two plus. Made both. Well, that'll be it for the fight phase. I don't have to take any morale tests because everything was either wiped out or only lost a model. So we're on to the final Death Guard turn. Death Guard turn five. After a bit of wrangling, I managed to get my models where I want them to. Hopefully I'll be able to get nine models near the Repulsor and the Space Marines. I can only have a maximum of nine. So if I can kill some, I should be able to at least hold the objective. But I also need to kill some things because I'm down five victory points. So this is the best compromise I can come up with. The Man has fallen back out of combat, so I can shoot the intercessors over there. And hopefully Gangrus will be able to deal with the Captain, because that will be a point for Slay the Warlord. Uh, no psychic face, because the Playcaster is dead, so straight on to shooting. We'll start with this squad of Plague Marines here, the ones with the plasma guns. Still just within two inches of the ammo boxes, so we're going to fire at the Intercessor squad over there. Supercharging, Champion's plasma gun on threes, that's two fives. And this is the other man, gets two hits as well. Uh, wounding on twos, that's three wounds. Six plus, nope, they're all dead. That's three dead Intercessors and a victory point. And then we've got the other squad of Plague Marines. They'll shoot with the remaining Intercessors over there. We, have, we do have a plasma gun and an ammo box on threes. Rerolling ones. Oh dear, so he blew, the champion blew himself up, which could be a problem. But we've got one hit, winning on a two. Did, they are in cover. Five plus. Nope, dead intercessor. And four blight launchers on threes. Uh, rerolling their two ones. That's three hits. Winning on threes, rerolling everything. That's the time on. Two wounds, rerolling that two. Nope, still two wounds. Four plus. Fell burst, he's dead. Yep. That's another victory point. That's shooting down onto the charge phase, and Gangrus will charge the captain. So I'll shoot my pistol at you going through my foot. Yep, you can't actually see him under the tank. Sixes. Oh, there's a hit. Fives. No. And then charge distance is only five. So he gets himself round to there. I'm not going to charge with the Blade Marines because I don't want the captain to hit them because he might be able <laughs> to um, actually wipe them out and reduce my models considerably. So we'll leave it at that and go on to the fight phase. The Observant Among you might notice that that Plague Champion is still there despite the fact he blew himself up just a moment ago. We just forgot to take away the model. But because the unit isn't charging and the Champion model isn't within three inches of the objective anyway, it doesn't matter in the final result. So, fortunately, it didn't matter. Uh, I spent a pound point for Veterans of the Long War, I'm going to give him plus one to wound. Mm, well, the Talon not it's going to matter very much now. And then he has four attacks hitting on twos. That's three hits, but two deaths of the False Emperors. Three rolling because of the Talon Man. Yeah, oh, that's true. So, actually... Yeah, so I, the one I had initially and the second roll that I got from Death of the False Emperor both re roll those ones because of Tally Man. Right, so that ends up being six hits. Wounding on twos, re rolling. 
That is six wounds. Three plus in the vulnerable save. No, he's dead. Thanks. So that is two victory points for Slay the Warlord and killing a unit. So he goes down, that leaves the Death Guard at five victory points versus six, but then at the end of the game, the Space Marines have five models within three inches of the objective, and the Death Guard have the Death Guard have seven. So that gives me three victory points at the end of the game. It means it will be a Death Guard victory, eight victory points to six. And we'll recap all of that for you now. Well, that was the mission from issue 77 of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. Uh, how do you think that went? It was a lot closer than some of the games we've had recently, I felt. I mean, it literally came down to the final fight phase to determine the winner, so I mean, can't really get much closer than that. If, if my final turn hadn't gone quite so well, I, I was five victory points down, mm. so I needed to achieve several things, and fortunately they paid off. I suppose you could say, well, you didn't have to charge your captain in and put him in the right way of danger, but on the other hand, he got you a victory point mm. by doing that and forced me to basically do something about him, so it could definitely have paid off, especially with his three-plus invulnerable save. Yeah, probably That's missed cool. some of my command points, probably should have kept two for any indefinite duty end, just in case I'm managed to kill Gangrus, or like you might have made two more dice rolls that would have ended that way so it was very much cl- it was close yeah I mean the first two turns very little happened well but we both decided to go for infantry only armies uh, so perhaps it's not the best army for both of us for this mission well, I think actually having the repulsor in the middle was an objective that blocks line of sight actually made things interesting Yes, it meant we had to think a little bit about positioning and line of sight. And it also meant I was able to hide all Gangrus mm. behind the thing. Although I think part of the reason why I ended up doing so was Gangrus spent the whole game sitting behind the tank. On the one hand, it meant he wasn't being used to do anything else. and So he could have gone out on the offensive. But on the other hand, it sort of proved his worth in the end because you had to come near the tank to yeah. get models for the model count. I do think I should have brought a unit of either a unit of scouts and hide them behind the repulsor or, or a unit of reavers instead of the chaplain because they ended up not doing very much because if I had a unit of five reavers instead of the chaplain at the end I would have won yeah it's true um, also I probably should have moved the aggressors out probably a turn earlier I mean they might have gotten shot but you might have been tempted to shoot them instead of the hell blasters that's true because the hell blasters were doing pretty well mm. up until that point they killed the spawn and a whole unit of plague marines yeah and I suppose it also shows just how valuable that single unit is so in games where you kill them off fairly early it tends to go downhill very quickly for me at that point mm. I don't think any unit performed particularly badly, and we both had units that didn't really do anything. I, mean, I had a whole unit of Plague Marines shot to bits. And, and the spawn. The spawn was killed before the, it got to do anything. And the chaplain that didn't do much. The funny thing is that having both brought infantry armies, I sort of expected there might be some more close combat, but because we started so far away, there wasn't a great deal. Your chaplain, as you said, didn't do anything, but the tally man, we did see his role, mm. rules. Uh, having him as my warlord was, of course, a deliberate choice because I never really intended him to get too far forward. Nearly copped it in the last turn, but just about got away with it. In the end, the Tallyman's rerolls did help. The Poxwalkers, they would have done a lot more if I'd managed to successfully get Blades of Future Faction on the so no mind. Yeah, um, I actually managed to deny something with the Captain as well. Yeah, the extra deny on Psychic Powers came into effect. My relic didn't come into effect at all because... Yeah, I didn't get to attack you. You never hit, you never attacked me, so I mean, that's yet another Death Guard relic that we haven't seen one yet. Well, I guess we can talk about the Repulsor. We'll, we'll show off in the intro of the next video, and it will actually be in the battle. Yeah, when so it has a base and someone crewing it. Yeah, I left the crew member out at the moment. I did magnetise all the bits, but again, we'll show that off. It is probably worth waiting to see its data sheet before building it entirely, so you can see what each of the weapons are, what you can sort them out for, and that sort of thing. So if you were playing this mission, probably just build the hull and use that. It's the right size. Yeah, well, I mean, supposedly it was involved in a crash landing. It seems yeah. remarkably intact. Mind you, I suppose it is a huge metal uh, box, it's, so it's probably it's pretty tough. To say. Pretty tough, it's yeah. got a lot of wounds. Yeah. Well, I mean, not the, that one. We lost that one. We'll have to have another one for the next mission. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, I don't think there's anything much more to say. So if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like and subscribe. Leave any comments you might have. Do let us know if you're uh, if you played this or if you have any thoughts about the mission or anything we did or our tactics or whatever. Uh, we've been the Tabletop Donkeys, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Bye.